if you're buying on hype altogether, basically you are buying, buying by way of what FOMO. And this is what we want to avoid, uh, especially so in today's so-called uh, dynamic real estate. Case studies over here about integrated development and how do they fare and again in relevance to the urban transformation. So over here we talk about Sengkang New Town being a new town and was introduced in the URA plan back in 1994 and of course in relation to campus heights. So run through a bit of so-called historical uh, timeline review and trending. So over here we talk about in 1994, HDB actually conceptualized Sengkang as a new township. And in 1997, he has his first HDB, which is then Riverville, that was completed. In 1998, we have the bus terminal that was opened as Sengkang Bus Terminal. And then in year 1999, Sengkang Town Task Force was created to facilitate the development of the infrastructure and transportation. And then in two, year 2000, we have the first condo called Riverview Crest Launch. And basically, it's a mixed use development at year 2002 TOP. All right. And its PSF was about $500 per square foot back then. To many of you, it must be thinking very cheap, right? Okay. And that was in year 2000. And then in the very next year, good things must wait. Eh? So the next year, just one year later, we actually have Compass Hike that was launched and TOP in 2002. Okay, so these are full-fledged residential, full-fledged integrated development that you learned just now. And it was only at $480 per square foot. And because it was still a test bed, the government or even the developer are not so confident. So they only go in at about $480 per square foot back then. And those who have bought it back then, good on you because you basically strike gold. Okay, next thing we need to talk about the LRT, MRT and the bus interchange and fully air conditioned, so-called more open set to OO trip. Okay. And then that is Singapore's first integrated development there in 2003. So in 2013, over the course of 10 years, new industrial clusters were announced for Sengkang West area with more transportation provided with more BTOs as well. And then over the course of 10 years, again okay, from year 2010 to 2019, 11 condos were launched, GLS and also ECs as well. And then we have Sengkang Grand that was launched in 2019. Okay, and again, when a township has gone on for some time already, when you are going at in year 2019, how does it look like? We'll share more with you in a bit. So this is at about $1,700 per square foot, which is three times the size of a uh, price of what was first launched for the first integrated development in this precinct. So Sengkang Urban Transformation, how does it look like? So back then you talk about Compass Height that was first launched in year 2001. You see that we, again, we four different timestamps, which from launch date, January 2020 and also January 2021 and November 2021 all together. Okay, so if you talk about launch date to its period over a course of so called, we are talking about nine years over uh, sorry, 19 years over here, we're talking about plus 81 percentage date. And then, of course, launch date to year 2021 November, which is this year, this month. We're just talking about just three more percentage again all together. And why so you learn just now is because of the 15 year shelf life. And then next thing, we then talk about Riverview Crest, which was the one that launched before Compass Hype. So it was launched, was actually slightly higher, $500 per square foot. And if you have bought in back then, uh, we talk about a span of 19 years, you actually get about what, uh, approximately 46% gain. And till today, it only adds another 10% to it, which is 56% altogether. So this shows that integrated development in terms of growth, if comparing to a full-fledged residential development, you actually get a lot more so-called uh, return for your money. All right. So in this instance, we are talking about a big disparity of 30 over percent. So at the back itself, we then have Watertown that was launched in year 2012. And the PSM back then was about $1,100 per square foot. And till now, basically we are looking at a percentage of plus 17%. Okay. But again, Back then, you buy Watertown at 1,169 per square foot in your first launch in 2012. People say that you are crazy because this price is never done in this area. But more importantly, because it is under urban transformation area, we see that we are able to sell a lot more higher than the already high price that you have bought in previously. And the rental yield is one of the highest as well. So the next thing we then talk about, even Sengkang Grand. Sengkang Grand itself, right now we are talking about in year 2019 launch at 1007. We do not have much runway for this one. So with that, we are talking about from launch still right now, developer sales price increment is probably about four to 5% plus minus. Okay. And this is just within a course of uh, 
less than one and a half years. So next, annualized gain in this different so-called integrated development and comparing to a full-fledged residential development here, we are talking about 4.2, 2.6. Of course, the longer you wait, usually the annualized gain will be smaller altogether because of economic scale. But in this instance, compass height still is trivial. All right. So next, we then talk about the spill over effect of bus series eight. Okay. So again, how many of you have remembered this? In fact, uh, because you went through my masterclass on the Coco Palm, you will know that I use this as one of my exit strategy, right? So bus series eight itself is basically 85% units were taken up at an average price of $1,600 per square foot on the first weekend of sale. Okay, and developer has actually adjust price uh, six times throughout that 12 hours window. So, again, we have a spillover so called demand. People who failed to get past service aid because we have more than, I think it was six times oversubscribed. All right, and then we have buyers who didn't get past service aid unit when it goes through the balloting, they end up going to Singtang rent residences, and that created the number of units to be sold, 45 units over just one weekend, okay, at $1,700 per square foot because they failed to get what? The price of Parcel Risk 8, where prices shoot up again to 2,000 PSF. So right now, if you have 2,000 PSF and then your, your psychological barrier has actually lifted, right? Why so? Because back then, 1,007 for Sengkang seems so expensive. But suddenly, Parcel Risk is 2,000. Right now, 1,007 becomes cheap. Okay, that's again the human psychological behavior. All right. So next thing over here, what we saw was that uh, again, multiple price hike as high as $2,000 per square foot in the suburban condo. And that's because it's in the urban transformation area. And with that, we see that Parsimis 8 is one of the star performer as a top 10 selling condos back then in fourth quarter, which is now fourth quarter 2021. And it still is. Okay. So what is the spillover effect here? In comparison, we look at uh, the rest of the development. In fact, when Sengkang Grand first launched, we only see 216 units so comparing to Pasiris at 400 over units. So, all right. Even for SPH and Kajima, when they launched Woodley Residences, a 600 units development, they do not have that amount of units sold as well because their price was already very high at over $2,000 per square foot back then. But right now, it seems like it's moving as well because why? The frame of mind has changed as well. In fact, Kajima still stick to his pricing. That's why he still he is able to sell right now altogether. All right. So next, we then talk about Pasiris 8 that was stipulated for $1,600 per square foot, but again, raise all the way to, raise his bar all the way to 2000 And it's right now less than 10% available. So how does the spillover effect looks like? So when Pasiris 8 launched during July 2021, okay, over the last weekend of July, we see that its PSF was about 1,611 and slowly rising altogether within that 12 hour window. We have buyers that not basically got the unit at Pasir 8 and this is Sengkang Grand. Back then, over a span of a month, they were only transacting 25 units, okay? And the PSF was around average of $1,700 per square foot. But just because Pasir 8 was able to sell so high and even up to 2,000, the Last weekend, or if not the very next day, which is of course the last weekend altogether, Sengkang Grand sold 85 units, okay? And that increased the number of so-called demand from 25 to 85. And if that's not enough, the very following month in August, right now, not the volume, but the price tag, developer was so confident that they increased the price by close to about what? Close to 80 PSM from 1,795 all the way to 1,866 PSF, okay? So again, if you're buying on hype altogether, basically you are buy buying by way of what for more. And this is what we want to avoid, uh, especially so in today's so-called uh, dynamic real estate. And most of them are what Singaporeans as well, right? As you learn from Canning Hill so-called buyer's profile. So in this instance, we talk about Sengkang Grand Review. First thing first, buying it to the urban transformation fundamentals. Sengkang Grand Residences, they are located basically here. And in my masterclass, we talk about we need to have a reputable primary school within 1km or international business school within 5km or if not a business hub, right? So in this instance, school-wise within 1km, we have Nan Chao Primary School, which is quite a reputable Chinese school, which is not too bad. So tick, so one tick. So next, we then talk about always select a project within walking distance or an existing train station or upcoming train station and of course in this instance it sits on top of the MRT so no problem to check third we then talk about within an urban transformation planning area 
So new launches always have higher price resistance in the downturn market compared to resale. So of course, this is definitely buying. This is definitely better than buying a Compass Heights, right? Because Compass Heights has already is a resale property. In terms of a downturn, in terms of price resistance, it will be a lot more riskier. So Sengkang Grand comparing to if our point of reference is Compass Heights, it will then be of course not as uh, tricky, not a bad move after all, given this comparison. But the last one comes in. Again, never purchase the last plot of land. Okay, so is Sengkang Grand the last plot of land? Looking at the satellite view over here, probably you can't tell what is the plot over here used for, right? So in this instance, we do uh, imposing of the master plan and then we realize that the big plot of land over there is actually stipulated for a bus depot location. It's not for residential usage. I'm going to go back again. You talk about the entire beige color side. So we refresh it one more time. The full residential plot, which is in beige color, looks like fully utilized. Okay. If you go back again, it's fully utilized. So with that in mind, this is actually the last plot, right? which means you may be buying one of the highest PSF in its precinct. All right. Given that there is no more so-called land available for relaunching. All right. And of course, we talk about the only other option is land available is by way of on-block. And of course, Sengkang is still a very new town. We don't see any on-block likely going to happen here because again, the first EC is Florida, right? And that is more towards the Aogang area altogether. So it's not really going to happen here, so to speak. So in terms of a score of uh, 10, I think this development weighs around maybe only six in terms of uh, price uptick altogether or even the five fundamentals I just shared with you. Okay, even though everything matches, but if you do you are buying the last part of land, right? That itself is actually very painful already. Okay. So next thing we then talk about looking in the future, what's out there for you. So in this instance we talk about the future of mixed use development. Alright? So with a new work from home culture become the norm. Okay. And I believe all of you are seeing this from home. Uh, will the CBD area basically convert more commercial spaces into a mixed use development. That's why they have two schemes that are coming up right now, even in the CBD area as well. Okay. And of course, we talk about home within integrated development retains their popularity, which is what we've seen over the last weekend. All right. Just two days ago, even again, like I mentioned, uh, $3,000 over PSF. And with home and hospitality also growing by 28% by 2027. And this is basically projected by John Slank, right? In their research altogether. So how does it look like in the future? We have Google Land that set new benchmark with their land tender project at Lentor, which is a mixed use land right beside Lentor and Marty train station. And we know that the PSF that went as high, 1,200 plus per square foot. And then we also have MCC land that has actually Beat it for the Tanamera mix you site right next to Tanamera MRT train station that is also an uh, integrated development, so to speak. And more than 15 bidders were, uh, were joined forces to build this land all together. And then finally, of course, Canning Hills. All right. So again, we talk about Misuse development in growth area, how does it look like? So on the Urban Transformation Masterclass, we learned that there's three kinds of uh, action plan that government do for urban planning. First is relocating our existing assets for new urban planning. And that's why we talk about Bayer Bay Air Base and also the Greater Southern Waterfront. And for this kind of action plan, it takes the longest to manifest. That means you also have a longer runway for growth. Okay. So in these instances, which project falls under it? In the current context, we have Park Place Residences in BLQ that was that is going to be that's already TOP last year, and then of course in introduction of new township and business center, and this is where we talk about uh, basically locations such as Bidatari New Town, Pogo Digital District, Bayshaw Town, Kampong Bugis, Kalang Riverside, Jurong Innovation District, and Tengah New Town, and in these instances under construction is Woodley Residences, and of course uh, some time back is Water Town in Pongo area in 2017. And then rejuvenating of existing infrastructure for extensive urban planning. And these are located at areas that are pretty mature altogether. And this time around, we have more so-called integrated development that falls under this category. So in the Changi East region plan area, we have the Pasiris 8 that has already launched. We also have the upcoming Tanamera by MCC land that we share showcase just now. In Ophir Rojo Corridor, we have under construction Midtown Modern that will be completing in 2025. 
We also have in the Beauty World Integrated Transport Hub area two products. One is fully sold. It's called the Link at Beauty World. TSF went as high as $2,300 per square foot, freehold development. And then we also have the upcoming Jalan Anak Bukit site that is already beaded and it's going to be selling at about what? $2,300, $2,400 per square foot, noting that it is $200 PSF higher than the Link altogether. All right. So, guys, over here itself, I think it's very important that if you are looking at all these so-called data and you are unable to pinpoint where to go from here, okay, uh, this is basically where I come in and this is where basically I will show you the pathway on how to match your profile to the marketplace.